Thanks. Thanks for everyone for coming. All right. We are Open Sesame. Um, just a little background for anyone who might not know who I am. My name is Joe Feidler, and this is my project. But um, we're going to be playing Sesame Street music for you. And one of the reasons for that is for the past 12 years, I've been one of the music directors for the television show Sesame Street. So a few years ago, I decided to combine my two worlds as trombonist and uh, Sesame Street music director with kind of my reimaginings of some of the Sesame Street classics. Mm -hmm. So we're playing mostly music from our new CD, Fuzzy and Blue, um, which we have here tonight. Exactly. Um, so the first tune is actually a Sesame Street classic um, from season one, and we call it ABCDEFGHI, but the original name is Ab Kadefki Jekyll Me Nop <laughs> which is um, Big Bird sees this on the chalkboard and it's the alphabet and he thinks it's this word and it's like the greatest word so he sings about it. Um, so that was that one. But we're going to continue with uh, <clears throat> um, a song which was a feature for one of the minor characters in the early years of Sesame Street, Sherlock Hemlock. Does anyone remember Sherlock Hemlock? He was always, he was based on Sherlock Holmes obviously and had a little cap and um, would solve mysteries. You remember? Yeah. So anyway, his song his feature song was X Marks the Spot. Thank you. 
Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, so <clears throat> when I got the job at Sesame Street, you know, I mean, obviously, I, I grew up on Sesame Street. I was four when it came on the air, and I watched it from, from the very first early years and always loved the classic songs. But when I got to the show and was able to look in the archive and see some of the original handwritten scores and lead sheets, it was pretty exciting. And, and I quickly, you know, realized that Joe Raposo and Jeffrey Moss, who were the first two Sesame Street uh, music directors were pretty brilliant and just prolific. And just the sheer amount of songs was stunning, but the quality of the songs was even more amazing. So 
<clears throat> I tried to focus both of our records on compositions by Joe Raposo and Jeffrey Moss, and probably <clears throat> his most iconic song we're gonna do next, it's um, called Being Green. And when <clears throat> the show was first on the air and no one really knew how it was gonna go, it exploded and it was everywhere and the media covered it and Kermit the Frog became a sensation and so one of the producers came into Joe Raposo's office as the story goes and he was panicked because they wanted to feature Kermit more and uh, he said to Joe, he said, Joe, we need a song for the frog. So <laughs> this is being green. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, man, everyone loves the frog song, right? <laughs> um, it's funny, I wanted, to, I wanted to include that on the first recording, because I tried to obviously put these songs into my own voice and make them my own, even though keeping the melodies mostly recognizable. But uh, I kind of couldn't find my way into being green. There's just so many iconic versions. I mean, the, the, the Ray Charles version specifically kept screaming at me as I was trying to make an arrangement. So finally, the second time around, I found my way in. Anyway, the next tune, going from the most famous or one of the most famous songs of all time, we're going to go to one of the most obscure. So a little bit of background. When, when Sesame Street first came on the air, there was no such thing as um, marketing for, and, and merchandising for children's television because children's television really didn't exist. So they started, Sesame started making Kermit puppets and, and releasing LPs. You know, if, uh, there was an original cast recording from season one. But the demand was so great, and they didn't have enough material, so they started just making records based on a different puppet. So there's one particular one that I love, and it's called Grover Sings the Blues. Um, and um, there's a song on that called I Am Blue, which I love. And so I thought we will do I Am Blue. And what I love is on the record it says, I am blue because I am. Tom? <laughs> Not for long. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's looking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
I am blue. People always ask, Gro who's, my, who's my favorite puppet working on the show? And it's definitely Grover. Um, I always tell it like this because I have to watch, as the guy who writes, composes all the underscoring music and the, like, the little incidental music, I have to watch every little clip, you know, 20 or 30 times. So many of the characters, as I'm sure you can imagine, could be quite annoying. But Gro I mean the names, <laughs> Elmo. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't say that, right? <laughs> but um, but Grover thankfully makes me laugh after watching the segments multiple times. Um, so what a lot of people don't know who are either old timers to Sesame Street or newer to the show that in the '80s there was a resident jazz musician puppet, and it was Hoots the Owl. Anyone remember Hoots? Yeah. So Hoots, Hoots was on for a while, and. Um, Kevin Clash, who was the puppeteer for Elmo at the time, he puppeted Hoots and was great. But um, there was a song they wrote called Put Down the Ducky and um, that Hoots, yeah. And then it became such a hit that it was a recurring thing. Anytime there was a celebrity on the set, they would sing Put Down the Ducky with Hoots. But the premise of the song is um, Ernie of Ernie and Bert is learning to play the saxophone, but sounds terrible. And he keeps making this hor horrendous squeaking noise. And... Um, so Hoots, he goes to Hoots to help him out. And as it turns out, Ernie has this rubber duck in one hand while he's playing, trying to play the saxophone. So the joke is, put down the ducky if you want to play the saxophone. Thank you. 
Oh, yeah. Put down the ducky. Woo! Um, we're going to dig back into a, a, little board, a little bit more of the obscure side of Sesame. Not obscure, not like I am blue obscure, but um, I was uh, writing these songs during the pandemic, during the whole lockdown. I thought I needed to do another Sesame Street record of kind of something to feel good about. And um, I had written many of the, most of the arrangements, and I was just trying to fill in. A f I needed a few more. And um, so last fall, early last fall, leading up to the election, I would, uh, was just feeling so a little distraught and a little upset about how divisive the country had become, both socially and politically, and, and also how people were just struggling in general, um, financially and, and emotionally and with the COVID. So I thought we, I needed a kind of a feel-good song, something to bring people together. So I was just scouring YouTube and just going through old Sesame clips. And I came across a song from the 80s that I knew about, but uh, didn't really dig into it. And it was more of a kind of a Broadway show tune, feel good song. But the lyrics were really wonderful. And it was all about us being one thing. And um, so I thought I would find my way into this and find uh, my own voice in that song. And this one's called We Are All Earthlings.
So just to keep you on your toes, we're going to go from our most serious to our kind of most ridiculous. Um, we're going to do a medley of songs from another kind of well-known yet obscure Sesame character named Bip Bipadota. And most people don't even know that puppet's name because he's never really formally called that in any episode. He was named that by the puppeteers himself. And um, most people who know Bip Bipadota know him from the classic segment, Menomina. Um <laughs> Menomina was a, uh, strangely, was um, a song that was written by an Italian film composer named Piero Umiliani. And he wrote this, actually this is a true story, he wrote this for an adult feature called Sweden, Heaven or Hell. <laughs> and um, this is all true. <laughs> and, um, and Jim Henson was in Europe and happened to see this and thought it was really funny. So before he was even on Sesame Street, Jim Henson had a puppet career and was in, in advertising. And he, he actually performed Menomina on the Ed Sullivan Show prior to Sesame Street, but then it became a Sesame Street classic. Anyway, that puppet is known as Bip Bip Bidota, and we're going to play three of his songs. We're going to play Manamana, Everybody's Song, and Fat Cat.
Thank you so much. Do yourself a favor when you get home tonight, YouTube Fat Cat Sesame Street. It's, def it's my favorite all-time segment in the history of 52 years. Um, it's just hilarious. So um, before I go any further, I want to int introduce who you've been listening to on the saxophones, Jeff Letterer. <laughs> Jeff was just here last week with, with Joe Font six, days, six ago. days ago. He's been a lot of places since he was last year. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, on trumpets tonight, Stephen Bernstein. Yeah. On all the trumpets. Yeah. Sean Conley on the bass. And Michael Serene on the drums. Um, I'm Joe Feidler, and we, we are Open Sesame. And we do have CDs for sale, if anyone's interested. We have both of our CDs. We have our original CD, just called Open Sesame, and our newest CD, which is Fuzzy and Blue, which we will play now. We're going to play a couple more for you before we call it a night. Um, Fuzzy and Blue is one of my faves, too, from the early years. It was composed by Stephen Lawrence, who was more of a secondary composer, but did have a bunch of classics. And this one was like a vaudevillian straw hat and cane number with um, featuring uh, Cookie Monster, of course, he's fuzzy and blue. Um, Grover, also. And then the third puppet was Harry Monster, who was kind of popular in the first few seasons and kind of faded away into oblivion, as, as some of the Muppets do. Um, my favorite recently, Telly. Since I've been working on the show, Telly Monster's kind of worked his way off the show. But anyway, um, we love this song, and we dedicate it to Harry Monster.
Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna play one more for the night. Um, but before I do, I wanna thank Tom and Jan and everyone here at the Bob Shop. <laughs> Not just for having us here tonight, but for everything they do and for keeping live music alive for such a long time. Is it 40 years coming up, something like that, live music? Uh, 31. 31th, I was 30, I was off by a decade, that's all. Yeah, close enough for Sesame Street, anyway. But. Um, <laughs> Um, but also, one more time, Stephen Bernstein on the trumpets, oh. Jeff Lederer on the saxophones, Sean Conley on the bass, Michael Serene on the drums, and also a very special thanks to Dan Gross for archiving all this stuff and doing being so, such a mensch. You're amazing. Um, so we're going to um, finish with probably the most famous song outside of Being Green, and this is... Um, written by Jeffrey Moss, and this one's Rubber Ducky. It's going to be our version. Um, you know, it's crazy. Sesame Street was such a hit. This is a true story. From the cast recording, which was, like I mentioned earlier, there was an original cast recording from season one, which Rubber Ducky was featured. The original version of Rubber Ducky made it all the way to number 16 on the Billboard charts that year, in 1970. I mean, think about that. It's crazy how popular Sesame Street was. Anyway, this is Rubber Ducky.
be careful. This is where the show gets a little messy. <laughs> Thanks everyone for coming out. We are Open Sesame, Jeff Lederer, Stephen Bernstein, Sean Connolly, Michael Serene, I'm Joe Feidler. We have CDs for sale. Thank you, Tom and Jan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, everybody at the Bop Shop. Get home safe.